Hi Angela, here I am, watching the solar eclipse. Our turn Angela, I can't wait to see what it's like. Hold on. Hi Angela, before watching today's video, I have some serious warning for you. That particular telescope was specially modified for that occasion. But never, never ever point at the sun with a normal telescope. Don't do that. No need to explain why. In today's chapter, we'll watch that video I recorded for you, a solar eclipse. Ah, will you tell us interesting stories? Of course, dear Ambrosio. We'll talk about many interesting facts. Let's watch it. Hey Sock, you scared the hell out of me. My name is Ambrosio! Okay buddy, relax. But you are a Sock. School texts always display beautiful images of the Earth and the Moon, but they place them next to each other to make them fit in one page, whereas they should be placed far apart, as we did in last chapter. We played with a scaled model made out of styrofoam balls, where the Earth diameter was nearly 6 inches and the Moon was 1.5. Today we also have the Sun in our model, and it's indeed pretty far from the Earth. It's already in place, but it's not within this frame. I guess I could point at the toy Sun with the camera, but that would be boring. Let me show you something more interesting instead. That corner displays the distance between me and the toy Earth. Look how it shows zero yards when I stay close to the Earth, but then the numbers change as I walk away. Right now those numbers show the distance between the Earth there and the Moon here next to me. But what will happen when I walk up to the toy Sun? 8 yards? Maybe 11 yards? We'll check that out. Come with me. one mile. We had to come to this rock breakwater where this city ends in order to place the sun at the right distance in our toy model. Properly scaled, the sun would be bigger than this 19th century cannon. It would be as tall as a five-story building. There, one mile away from us, lies our toy earth. Compared to its six inches, this is a huge distance indeed. That is why the image of the real sun takes eight minutes to arrive to us at the speed of light. Think about this, every time you're looking at a sunset, what you see is the place where the real sun was 8 minutes ago. The real sun will be already below the horizon. It's like looking through a time machine. In the last chapter we watched a moon eclipse, that is the result of placing the earth right between the moon and the sun. However, what happens when the moon is exactly in the line of sight between us and the sun? That's when we get the solar eclipse, and they have one feature that makes them way more interesting than lunar eclipses. Try this little experiment. Extend your arm and cover with your thumb the image of a lamp, and see what happens then if you switch the eye you're blinking. Ugh. 
you will see different things with left and right eye because each eye lies at a different spot on your face. That's what makes solar eclipses so much more interesting than moon eclipses. The experience is different for each person, depending on where they are on the Earth. Actually, only very specific points will be fully under the shadow. In the 2017 solar eclipse, we are about to see those places light on that red strip. On those cities, they witness it a truly spectacular phenomenon. Don't miss this, Angela. It's so beautiful. Watch out, it happens fast. After the last sun ray is blocked by the moon, a ghost of light will show up. It's a ghost that always surrounds the sun, but it's only visible during solar eclipses, the solar corona. Have a look at these satellite pictures of the Earth during that eclipse. The shadow travels across the US. They call it the Great American Eclipse. The shadow appears on the west side first, so that people living on the west coast watch the eclipse earlier than those living on the east coast. Those who were farther north than the shadow of the moon were looking at the eclipse from above. Therefore, they saw the moon covering the lower half of the sun whereas those living farther south and the shadow were looking from under the eclipse. Hence, they saw the moon covering the upper half of the sun. What is this giant mess? Those on the west watch it earlier. Those on the east watch it later. Those on the north see a different thing. Explain this bullshit. Well, Ambrosio, don't worry. Let's try this. We will use the simulator for three different cities. <laughs> Then you'll understand what they saw, okay? Oh, okay! We'll choose some point farther north on the shadow to see the eclipse from above. For instance, this one in Alaska. For comparison, we'll pick up one place farther south too, like this one in Mexico. Also, some city on the east coast and right under the shadow of the moon, like this one in South Carolina. We'll speed up the clock so that one minute spans six hours in real life. In Alaska, the sky around the sun was orange. Guess why? At that northern latitude, the sun was low on the horizon, and we already saw in last chapter that Rayleigh scattering filters out the blue light when the sun is low on the horizon. Look how the eclipse rise first to Alaska. That's because they are on the west. Also, since they are watching the eclipse from above, in Alaska they saw the moon traveling below the sun on the sky. In Mexico, they see the opposite phenomenon. The moon covers the top part of the sun because they are watching the eclipse from the south. And here in Simpsonville, the moon blocks the sunlight completely. Since this simulation is running at a faster rate than real life, totality will last one instant here, but that corresponds to the totality we have watched earlier in this video. By the way, the city we have chosen in Mexico is Merida, north of the Yucatan Peninsula. That name rings a bell, right? We mentioned that place in last chapter. There is a huge impact crater buried under the ground and I told you I will tell you about it later. That crater was made by the very meteorite that marked the end of the Cretaceous period, causing the extinction of such animals as the T-Rex and the Triceratops. Well, it's time now to watch the video. I recorded it on August the 21st, 2017 in Norman, Oklahoma. You and I came so close to watching that eclipse together, that is why I recorded it for you. Now, would you answer a little question for me? After all you've learned in this video, do you think Oklahoma was north or south to the shadow? Those who are watching this video are welcome too to leave an answer in the comments section.
Hi Angela, here I am, watching the solar eclipse. Look, there are so many people on the campus today. And guess what? The moon is getting in front of the sun. It's called eclipse. And here we have a special telescope to look at the sun. I'll try and have a look. Oops, too many people waiting in line here. I don't know if you can see it, but the light is very strange here. I am waiting now to have a look through the special telescope for the eclipse and I will show you with the camera. After this lady is our turn. I can't wait to have a look, Angela. It's our turn. Please bear in mind, this is a special telescope. You should never try to point a normal telescope to the sun, okay? It's very dangerous. <laughs> Look, that's the moon in front of the sun. It's fascinating, right? Do you like it? Come with me, there are other ways here to see the sun because some people have brought dark cameras with a little hole and one can see the sun. Oh, may I have a look? Thank you. Sure. Do you know how this works? Yes, yes. <laughs> see this box? There is a tiny hole here. And the image of the sun gets projected down here. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. See, Angela, the sun here. Look how nicely we can see it. ¿Qué tal? Hello. Are you talking to your daughter? Sorry, I thought your daughter would still hopefully be in town. No, she this this year she had to go. Yes. Someday I'll take you to a solar eclipse. You have my word. Even if I am old and my hair is white by then, I promise you, your dad will take you to a solar eclipse. 